order. Um, we need to approve the August meeting, our minutes. Anybody want to make a motion to approve? Anyone? And I'll second. Did you guys actually look at them? Yeah. Okay. You second it? Yeah. Okay, so we're all in favor? Yes. Let's do the vote. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we have Mark Dunn here, chairman of the Smart Growth Committee. And Andrew Gnatic. And Andrew, what is your last name, Andrew? Gnatic, uh, G-N-A-T-E-K. And you are a member, co-chair? Of the Smart Growth Committee. Yeah. And he's been on other, yeah. Cool. And he's born and raised Hadley. So we're very curious to hear what this committee is for, what are you doing, what are you planning on doing? Well, we're trying to burn fossil fuels and, uh, <laughs> no, we are, um, the planning board applied for a grant, uh, a, uh, they call it DLTA, uh, District Local Technical Assistance, yeah. and we got the grant and it was, this is to um, investigate uh, smart growth as the state defines it and so somewhat the national industry defines it. Um, you know, you could boil it down and say affordable housing, but it's, it's really supposed to be more than just affordable housing. Um, and s and in investigate if the town of Hadley has an interest in it, and if so, is there an interest in where and how and do we have so much of an interest that we would want to amend our zoning to incorporate it and so that's we're in the are we we're in the first public engagement section or actually we've just closed that I think yeah oh you did yeah we we had a survey uh, out we had um, you should have gotten it in a water bill uh, I think there was a QR code that would take you to, it was a nice survey monkey. Um, oh, asking a lot of questions yeah. about housing. I think there were only 10 questions, but you know, so we tried to make it not too onerous so people wouldn't be like, oh, I don't want to, I can't give a half an hour to this. Um, and and um, again, I don't know if I got that. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has done this before, so they, you know, they weren't just recreating the wheel um, but they gave us some examples and we kind of tailored them to what our interests were and weren't. Um, and it was, uh, some of them were, you know, give us not just A or B, but, you know, choose which three of these eight interest you the most. And so we're going to be looking at the results uh, Monday night. Oh, I, was, I couldn't wait to hear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what all was on the survey? Were there were questions about housing and, and zoning. Um, well, it was questions about what is your interest. I think you know, Andrew, you might remember better. Um, I've got a lot going through my head, but I think yeah, more about like what what you were comfortable with um, seeing in Hadley, because um, it was like specifically tailored to like the Route Nine corridor mm -hmm. and what you wanted to sort of see and what you weren't, what you didn't want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and s by s smart growth, it's also it, it involves other things like um, trying to put it on transit routes. I mean, a lot of it's coming out of Boston and suburbia, so we're, we don't doesn't necessarily f fit us to a T. But we do have uh, no pun intended. But uh, we do have. Uh, the PVTA corridor that goes down Route 9 and right. the, the co college and the universities and, and the malls. And um, so it was, uh, I think originally we were going to do it from the uh, bike, uh, from the rail trail crossing, which is by the Hadley Garden Center east. But uh, I think we just made it Route 9 be because there's also an interest going west, yeah. maybe from the town center going west, there might be opportunities. So it was, um, I think it was asking, as, as I recall, uh, would you be interested in um, adaptive reuse infill 
you know, like infill is like there's a house here and a house here, and maybe you you get a you make a zone where it could be a little bit denser. Uh, would you would you be comfortable with duplexes, tri triplex, uh, apartment buildings? So it, it's asking you scale. But this is only along the Route Nine corridor, not anywhere. Well, else it gives you opportunities t to write other. So if you'd say, you know, I think we should have this on Shattuck Road, then you know you, that'll be in our our data. But the assumption was that that's the main uh, commercial corridor. And so oh, one of the other things it pushed was uh, mixed use. Mm -hmm. Like the old, you know, c what, what was coming back around. Like, you know, you'd have your store on the ground floor and you'd live up above, you uh -huh. know, that kind of idea. Although you don't have to have both. You know, you can have apartments above commercial and they're not, ownership isn't, Right, right. It doesn't connected. have to be the yeah. owner of the business yeah. living up And then the other thing it also touched on, or it gave the opportunity for people to weigh in on, was the um, uh, the mall. Um, oh, know, housing it, and right. The <coughs> op you know, it it left it open for you to comment on that, either positively or negatively, or just skip it um, if you had any thoughts on on that. You know, you know and. Uh, you know, we didn't include the UMass design project, um, but we, I don't remember if we you referenced know, it. It was briefly referenced early okay. on. Okay, yeah. What is well, well, hang on, um, Michael, you had a question? Oh, I was just curious if you were surveying residential infill, um, that would seem to be more of the rest of Hadley than more so the Route 9, which is primarily commercial. So will, will you get information about opinions on that from this survey? Um, it's open for people to add that. I think the, <coughs> excuse me, I think the assumption that is if it's going to be denser, it's going to, you know, if, if a developer is going to build this, it's going to be more cost effective if the utilities are there. Mm -hmm. So if you get off of the sewer line or the water, then you have to get you know, a well yeah. or sewer, uh, I'm a septic. Um, so again, that was again leading towards the assumptions that you have bus stops, you have utilities. You know, Route 9 was just kind of low-hanging fruit. Sort of, you know? but there's not a lot of green space. Well, that was one of the other things was, you know, are, are you interested in micro park, pocket parks? Yeah, there is. Like oh, I did not see this survey. Mm. You, um, not everybody gets a sewer bill. Mm. Well, they were also available, I think, here and there were some some postings at the, at the transfer station the as library. well. And the okay. library had them. Oh, maybe I did. And do maybe it. town hall. So you could do it paper, or you could do it online. So it was just with the sewer bills, or with the water bills? It was with the water bills, I believe. Yeah, yeah. water bill. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Hey, maybe I just so I'm curious. Let's take this a little further than just Route Nine. If you have a potential development like on the bad field, for example, mm -hmm. where there were hundreds of units proposed, yeah, that but one. Right. now the latest, because actually our family has been farming that for the last few years, yeah. now they're talking about a smaller unit. Would it go off of Route 9 some distance? Well, that's a whole separate. That's, that's a separate from this smart growth study that a specific proponent, you know, the Babs, uh, Barry uh, Roberts, Barry Roberts, thank you, are proposing a zone that would follow 116 up. Um, a lot of that is undevelopable, so it's kind of, I don't know, I, I, this is just my opinion, but I think the state doesn't want to see spot zoning, but this might be a bunch of undevelopable, undevelopable land, and the Babs. Mm. So it almost is kind of like spot zoning for them. Why um, is that land undevelopable? It's a, there's a lot of wetland around where 116 was that. But that the, the corner you're talking about, the corner of Maple and Rocky Hill. North Maple and Rocky Hill. When you get further down, it, down like east, further east, it, it, gets, it drops it's down. Wetland. It's wet. Yeah. yeah. But some of that could be developed. Up, basically up to, up to the tree line and maybe you could take a little of the tree line but I think Barry 
um, was being sensitive and suggesting that they might take very little of the tree line and work in the fields. And I think he uh, also scaled it back a lot. The other developer, I can't remember who they were, they came in with it's like 200 or, or more units and and pickleball carts and, you know, and and they really didn't like they really didn't come in and take the pulse of Hadley before they just said this looks like a great opportunity on land but bam we'll th throw it at you and everybody well I shouldn't I, I can't speak for the whole town but I think most people were like ah mm -hmm. kill well, me first that would just be so much but yeah and I mean personally I'd like to see more family housing I think they were out of towners and I think they didn't realize that the sewer hurdles that they had to go through there they would, you know, because they were like, oh, well, you have a regional with Amherst. I'm like, well, yeah, but you get, you got to get over there to it. No one's ever built that. And so Barry is proposing something smaller that would all uh, gravity drain down to, I think it was the northeast corner of the site, and then he would have a, a pumping station and pump it back up to... To Amherst. Uh, back up to North Maple, where yeah. he would tie into ours. Mm -hmm. How many units is he talking about? It was, I want to say it was less than 100. And it, can't does, remember. it does seem like it'd be a mirror image of East Hadley Common. Yeah. With the over 55 housing, mm. so smaller lots, smaller scale. But mm. luxury housing, not affordable. Well, I mean, that's up to, you know, depends what route we go and how much say we have. You know, we could. If we could, uh, when you when you do the over 55, you're allowed more density by the state rules. Yeah, and I don't know if I'd necessarily define that as luxury. Well, well East, East Commons was, yeah, it's it was not as affordable as people would have hoped, but yeah, it was more affordable than than some. And then yeah, he tried that one. Uh, off of uh, Middle Street, right? Um, but the town shot that down. That 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 required a, a zoning change. He wanted to extend across the bike path. So that's what he wants to do on that corner is over fifty-five houses. I think th I think it was over fifty-five, mm -hmm. or was just part of it over fifty. I can't remember. I, I think most of it's uh, over fifty-five housing. And, and I could be wrong, but I thought it was maybe a mix of maybe some were. Uh, single family units and maybe some were more combined which yeah. would be more like appealing to us something. yes something which would bring the prices down where you share you know a duplex or something mm -hmm. I could be wrong but if you two would kind of circle it back to route 9 whether it's east or west mm. um, you're going to be presenting the results of the survey to the planning board so I think if, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew. I think that they, uh, the plan was the schedule because we, we our our fees are expire at the end of the calendar year. So that's kind of our goal is to have a product, um, so that we had this first reach out and get a survey, then to come up with a design and come up with a uh, you know then bring that back to the town for a second round. Like a zoning design, is that what you're talking uh, about? Yeah, I mean, kind of a, a, a schematic proposal, because we don't have the time to to make a thorough um, but identify amendment different to the little pockets. Right, to come back with, this is what we think, and, and you know, you're welcome to uh, join us, either because we meet here or our Zoom, and weigh in when we're assessing that. Do you, you know, have regular meetings? Yes, uh, right. we tend to meet. We've tried to set it up the Monday before every planning board. Mm -hmm. So, the pl so the planning board is two. Is, is it the sec? Is the first and third? So we're the first and third Monday. First and third Monday of each month. Third Monday. That's how we packed in all that we were Set trying to achieve. Seven. We're at five. Yeah. Yeah. Five? yeah. yeah. So housing yeah. is such a hot topic. Mm. A, even the presidential debate the other day, they were talking about housing and all of this, and the different candidates are offering their possible plans for it. Um, how do you even begin to propose this and whatever work you hope to get done? 
Well, I think we're going to look at what the results were, and that's going to inform, then we'll say, well, we'll start bouncing off of each other. What about this? What about that? Well, th that doesn't fall in line with what the results said or, or you know. So, so were there questions in the survey about, you know. Th it talked about scale. Well, it uh, ages, like, you know, family housing, single housing, uh, over 55 I housing. I don't believe that there was anything in that demographic, but. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. If, I if I remember, it was more general. Right, like yeah, housing in general. It was talking about density and and uh, scale. So it wasn't specific for senior housing. No, but there were certainly options to write that in and say, and it it did mention um, there was kind of a there was a good preamble. Um, I get credit as signing it as the chairman, but you know I I was only one of six people, and actually PVPC you know started with a template and yeah. Andrew and the group really contributed a lot. So, you know, I take all the credit with with the signature. But anyway, there was a there was a an opening preamble that that talked about a lot of the concerns that we believed were out there. Um, like people that have uh, well either been born or raised or raised their kids here and want to downsize and can't afford to stay in town. Right. Um, you know how new starting a new family can't afford to buy right. you know it was it was the things that you hear people grumbling about uh, all, all the time more we, people that work in Hadley yeah. you know, and, and that too yeah. and some, some of these some questions seem there was a housing production plan committee that uh, happened like two years ago yeah and a lot of those questions sort of came up in that And do we have the answers to those questions somewhere that anyone's paying attention to? Well, I mean, maybe on Monday you might hear more. Well, there's a housing production. Pl uh, that was um, is that done by the Housing Economic Development? No, Committee? this was done by uh, Pioneer Valley. PBPC. Yeah, when Eric was was running it. Okay. And so, do you guys have that information? We it's available. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Well. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I would like to tell you more, but we're uh, a volunteer group that Again, are, we you know, that have, you know, to put bread on the table, and so we have only so much bandwidth. Yeah. You know, um, Andrew works at Smith. I work at UMass. We're, you know, we working. totally get it. We're the mm -hmm. same. Yeah. Same yeah. Deal. What department are you in at Smith? Uh, the Art Museum. Okay. So you said in the beginning that it's not just affordable housing you're considering, but can you name the other things? or is it Well, it's not just that? simply affordable housing, but it's also trying to make it, um, you know, that it's almost, I, I would, I it's not my specialty. Um, Kyle could explain it a lot better, but in my eyes, it's like an affordable lifestyle. I mean, like, if you put affordable housing out and I don't have a car, then can I get to my job? So that's why we try to keep it near transit. So that, right. you know, if you say, you know, because people make decisions like, I either feed the kids or I buy my meds or I pay the insurance on my car. So for people that can't afford to buy a car and drive, you know, that's why transit is so important that right. it, it allows the people that are making uh, mean or below um, so that they don't have the disposable income. They have to get all the staples to live and right. feed their family, but maybe that's one of the things that they shouldn't have to uh, be able to absorb. So that's why. I keep mentioning mm -hmm. transit, so that yeah. and 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 that's why I think the uh, the the Econo Lodge was such a kind of a slam dunk that it was you know the idea that you know people that work um, in the in the malls you know might have to be driving there from you know somewhere in Hamden County and. 
or t taking three buses and transfers, you know, take that, an hour and a half that, to get to that work. would be, you know, this would give them more time to raise a family and be present for their, you know, if they lived right there. There was a there was a famous old. Uh, it's a very different cost scale, but there was a famous sign that used to be in downtown Boston on some uh, expensive apartment building. You're, I'm sure you've all seen it. It said, if you, you lived here, here, you'd be home by yes. now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. As you're sitting there on Storo Drive, you know, right. an, an hour for, from getting 15 miles home, you know. Right, and bumper to bumper. Yeah. But I just, I get concerned about lack of green space. I, I wonder what it, I think mm -hmm. about living in the Econo Lodge and just being surrounded by pavement and well that's where if you had this survey it, it mm -hmm. said are you interested in courtyard development you know so it did talk about adding green oh, okay. spaces mm -hmm. it Good, talked yeah. about uh, you know what kind of streets do you like do you want to see tree line streets do you want to see uh, there was something like green, green alleys green ways yeah uh, you know so um, oh good I'm glad that was on there of course I checked I want to see a toll you know, a coal patch and burnt earth and scorched. Yeah, no, no. It's, we were trying to um, tr trying to leave input avenues for all of those kinds of things. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. We'll be curious to see what the results are. Yeah, so. yeah. And if you if you missed the survey, I mean, yeah. Um, is it still open or closed? No, it's, it's, it, it closed just last, or I think maybe this early this week, I yeah. think maybe Monday. So, but uh, I would encourage you to uh, either send an email to me or to, to PVPC and maybe added results, you know. So the first question out of the 10 was, are you a Hadley resident? Mm. And if you checked yes, you go to question two. If you check no, then it says thank you very much. This is really looking for right. in, you know yeah. input from Hadley mm -hmm. residents. Well, Kathy, did you have an opportunity to fill in that survey? Mm -hmm. All right, I know I did. Good. Yeah, did I you? didn't see it. No, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. If I filled out something like that, but it might have been the older one that you know was a couple years ago. I think there was was there a QR code and then a link also? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, maybe I didn't. and we know that everybody's just inundated, and this. Well, you know, and also the library. And there's done a junk mail, and there's just also. so much stuff. It's so easy to just. I mean, I can't tell you how much, how much inserts I just. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a rough sense of how many people uh, replied to the survey? Did he mention that? Yeah, I know. Last time I checked, I think it was around like 300. Okay. Okay. Well, that's almost. How many people vote uh, well, at an average? Eight percent, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. If Hadley's around five thousand. Mm. Mm. We had pretty good turnout on the. Yeah. The survey. Yeah. Mm. So if if, if we want to still fill one out, we can email you. Want to like? Do you want to still turn? Uh, yeah, I I think it's officially too late, but okay. but. I can't imagine we would turn down, you know, if well, you... we could come to a meeting. If, 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 if they still have any left at, at the library or here, yeah, I mean... I must have done it. And there will be another round of uh, community engagement after we field that first round and we come up with, this is what we think we're hearing. Then we'll come back out again, and then okay. you know, so you have an another chance. And then I think what we talked about on the planning board was that then we would uh, we would apply for some more funding to um, if at the end of this calendar year we have a a, a plan of what we want to do, well, then we would um, find some way to fund um, paying Pioneer Valley to write that to work with the planning board to write that amended code to bring to the fall meeting because yeah. we, we just didn't think we had enough time uh, t to get something by the spring yeah meeting. and a Avery this is partly for your information so Hadley doesn't have a full-time town planner they don't um, Hadley doesn't have other planning people to do this so often we will have to contract with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission 
but they've been very helpful. They helped us get the Green Communities Grant. They've helped us in all sorts of ways with some of the surveys and other things you're doing. And just to have that sort of horsepower and the expertise really makes a difference. And that's really what they're there for. They're there for um, Hampshire, Hamden, I think Berkshire County. So I, I think they, I think they serve something like 43 communities that might not have a like Northampton has a planning office. You know, towns. Uh, you know, uh, I think Amherst. You know, again, it's what does your town budget afford? You know, you have right. to. Smaller towns. You know, it's probably you know like on Hadley's. It's been on our list. But until we run a surplus and can anyone in any set of select board can feel comfortable with a commitment, because you can't say we're we're going to pay the planning board when it you don't have certainty that in five years you don't have to lay them off because you can't. You know. So it's uh, so it's sort of the challenge of being a small town. Yeah, and, and even in Massachusetts, that's still a big concern. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody got any more questions? Um, for our next round of outreach, do you have any better ideas on how to get the survey out, you know, how to get it in front of people's eyes? I mean, you have the Gazette and writing a letter of saying we're oh. trying to do this. That's one way yeah. to get it out. Yeah. But you know, yeah. in the same way the library promoted their most recent rounds of surveys. Mm. I got the library in one of my emails. Yeah. Yeah, if you have yeah, I mean, access to email address. In the paper, yeah. Facebook maybe, like put it on the Hadley community And Alex, did, 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 you, did you post it on your? Yeah, we, we posted it several times in our social media. Um, we also had our, our, um, our survey too that we're promoting, so everyone all at once is kind of inundated like three different surveys going on in town. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, liked the insert with the water bill because yeah. it was right yeah. there. I go, oh, I'm gonna do this right now. Yeah, it was so handy with the yeah. QR code. And I think it was small, as I recall. You know, because if if it gets big too much, like you have like 20 seconds of someone's time, you know, you can make more, you can grab more. Fish with just that little bite. That was our our yeah. plan was to. Right, but a lot of people, not I mean, no. not a lot. Well, no, I understand. Fair number of us are renters. Yeah. No, I, right, right. Lib library. Uh, Alex, is this? Media. Did yeah. you bring this survey over to uh, Winfield? There was a box in the lobby that said, mm -hmm. "You can put your surveys here." I don't think I got. I didn't. I tried going around, but it was hard to like reach people and PM yeah. people in their offices. So right. it was kind of a bust, unfortunately. Oh, too bad. Yeah, I think there was a mention of Winfield and what's the other one over there? Um, we Vesta. did. Well, we now did. it's Vesta yes. Homes. Vesta. So it's yeah. There are like one, two, three, but five buildings. We might have just. Yeah, I don't know if we had it. I did any, put some at the. Uh, What's that place? Golden Court? Yeah, Golden Court. Yeah. And maybe we assumed that it would spread like wildfire for anyone from there that went to the senior center. They would so you had some at the senior center? Yeah, time. yeah. I think they were here and at the library and maybe town hall. I don't want to take up your whole... No, no, no. Thank meeting. you very no, much for coming in and we sharing. We really wanted yeah. to know. Maybe the next go-round... Could you let our committee know you're doing it? Sure, absolutely. And then at least absolutely. I'll know. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll all know yeah. to find it, get it, yeah. look at it. And if you guys have like five more minutes, Avery, while you introduce yourself, there might be some crossover. Okay. These are two people that have quite a bit of background information, and maybe there will be something you'll say that will uh, trigger some thoughts from them. Okay. All right. So if you want to introduce yourself, that would be great. Uh, so, hello. Yeah. Um, my name is Avery Mano. I'm a. Um, oh, my. I use they them pronouns, and uh, I'm a, a student at Hampshire College. And uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm also a transfer from Florida. Um. Um, so I'm currently working on a project about like the process of creating a um, a climate action plan. 
and so yeah, I would just I'd like to attend your monthly meetings to learn more about your process and the challenges. Um, so I also have um, a little bit of experience in climate action work as um, so for a, a previous a class at Hampshire, um, the school took a, a very unique approach to uh, writing their new climate action plan in um, getting well pretty much getting the students to do it. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, um, yeah, part of a team of students led by our sustain sustainability manager and uh, one of the professors. Is that Stephen? Stephen Roof? Um, yeah, he was the professor. Okay. Yeah. The manager is Sarah Draper. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, and I did want to mention that if I do use any of this in my um, thesis project, um, so I will ensure that I respect your um, confidentiality. So hey, you'll all uh, r remain anonymous, and of, of course you'll uh, be able to uh, read uh, like any of uh, uh, the work that I produce. Uh, um, is this for Division yeah, Three? Yes. Okay. So Hampshire, it's a little different. Some of you may know this. Division I went to ten. Hampshire. Okay, so Division <laughs> Three is like the upper level, not really senior year, but kind of heading toward conclusion. Of your degree, it's your final project, uh, right? Okay. And uh, uh, if I correct me, if I do say uh, you're sculpting a uh, climate action plan, is that for like the college or the community or the the country or? Oh, yeah, it was uh, for the college. Okay. Uh, yeah, we it went through the whole um, <coughs> outreach. A process uh, tried to gather what uh, the community like wanted out of a climate action plan, uh, and what kind of goals uh, would uh, like best, uh, um, I guess best suit like be best for, uh, for, uh, for the school. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and uh, so, uh, I, I believe the uh, um, uh, plan like uh, got approved by the president and the board of trustees this summer. Okay, so we can fill you in a little bit. So we've been around for about four years. Um, it was very difficult during the pandemic on getting together, but you know, sort of post-pandemic, we've been able to get together on a monthly, uh, for monthly meetings. We have looked at climate action plans because we know a lot of our neighboring towns have them, but we also know that we're really limited. We do not have a planner. We don't have an energy sustainable folk, folks like Amherst or Northampton, so um, it's difficult. We are all volunteers and we try our best in the spare time we have um, to develop this, but there's not a lot of capacity here. When I was in school, there, you know, green was just a color it uh, mm. didn't didn't mean what it means now and we didn't know and after i you know after i worked a couple of years and i came up here I, I got involved in the western mass um uh green building council and uh actually ended up leading it for one year but uh, uh yeah it's uh, that's a passion of mine so that's great that's uh, something if I weren't so busy with my nine to five, I would be more involved with. That's why I drive an EV. Oh, I was just wondering, you know, in what you guys are considering, is there any conversation about, you know, besides the new buildings meeting our upgraded building code how nice it would be to have solar on these new buildings and yeah, making them as we haven't gotten into that energy efficient that as granular possible. of a yeah. Currently, we're kind of just trying to figure out if the town even wants to go wants to go down this route. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not even like it's kind of just an exploratory. It seems like that other survey did reveal that people want it right along the Route Nine corridor. 
No? I don't know. No. Yeah. I thought it'd be interesting to see those, you know, have those yeah. results for you guys to work with. Anyway, we, we're, it's Avery's turn. So Avery, welcome. And, you know, just I look forward to collaborating with you. So do you see yourself coming to all of our meetings or um, sometimes? I, yeah, I hope to attend as many as I can. Okay. The meetings are archived on Heavy Media. Mm -hmm. They're basically uploaded to YouTube. So that's also another way that you can see what's going on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you have any questions, that's my work email. And I would then transfer you over to my private, but yeah. Okay. All right. And thank you again for coming in. Thanks for having us. And thanks for your work. Thank you for your work. Okay. And Megan's available this week. So yes, Megan, uh, our number one speaker, Megan. How do you say that? Sadinsky. Sadinsky. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's with Hampshire, ha Hamden, ha Hampshire Conservation District, this organization that I only just recently heard about that I want to know. I, I figured we'd all, Jack knows a little bit more about them than I do, but um, they offer all sorts of services. We do hope that she can, stuff. we hope she can join us in October. They were involved in helping out with the uh, perennial gardens that were recently planted at the library. And anyway, so we'll just wait for her to come, but I'm really looking forward to that. She couldn't come tonight. Her boss is in the hospital or something and she's having to fill in. So, so the flowers that were planted <coughs> in front of the library were part of a grant. So it was just a fraction of the full price value. And they also had another local nursery owner come in and lay it out so basically the two flower beds on the west side of the Hadley Public Library were brought to us by the Hampshire the Hamden Hampshire Conservation District so okay that's enough about that uh, so updates I guess ev does everybody realize that Carolyn Brennan has is on medical leave now and as of December she's she's done working for the town she's on medical leave till December and then she's retiring so um, I'm Mike Mason police police chief yeah police chief couldn't find that word well and it sounds like he's going Brilliant. to be doing both jobs yeah he will be doing oh. town administrator and police chief that's my understanding So the next thing is our Green Communities Grant. We have gotten a bunch of quotes for um, my list. A door replacements at Hopkins, um, closed spray cell foam, uh, some insulation that's needed there, a new door, I guess the entrance to the janitor's area at the elementary school needs a new door and framing weather stripping for five other doors and bottom door sweeps from places that Gary Berg then enlightened us that we could do better and he suggested two other companies that Chris Dado didn't get in touch with to get better quotes so Chris is working on that in the meantime Gary um, Chris Mason alerted us that the incentives for upgrading to LED lighting will be ending with this year. So if there were any of our municipal buildings that still needed to switch over to LED lights, do it now while we could still save a little bit of money. So <coughs> Gary said that um, it was the sewer department that needed to still switch over some indoor lights and the, some outdoor lights. And uh, he got the quotes and um, from Amp Electric, 
Did you see the recent email? Mm -hmm. So that the, they did, he did get the incentives from Eversource applied, which will save us four hundred twenty-one dollars. So altogether, I did reverse math there. Hold on. Oh, I guess it's going to be two thousand seven hundred eighty-seven dollars to upgrade the lighting at the sewer department. So this goes back to earlier questions that were raised before. We were able to get a Green Communities grant and people said, well, who's going to be watching the money? How is it going to be spent? And much of it is going for the schools. Some of it is going for other town buildings. It's all going for mun municipal buildings. And uh, it's really interesting to see that it's the business manager from Hadley Public Schools. It's Gary Berg who is in charge of maintenance for the town and they are finding places where they can spend the money. So this is money that doesn't have to come from the town budget, but it'll come from this grant. And it'll be, in the end, we'll probably spend about 120,000 because we have some management fees with this grant. The other thing is once we use up this designation fee, grant. we can a designation grant, uh, they have opportunities for other grants. Right, competitive grant. I mean, that's what the other towns have done is once they've used up their designation grant, then you put together a plan for another chunk of work that needs to be done, all energy efficiency on municipal buildings and apply for a grant. And, yeah. You know, it's looking like Deerfield, Sunderland, Amherst, they've all gotten them. So well, and a number of those communities were green communities a decade ago. Right. And so they were able to do it. Also, you know, kudos to Chris Desjardins with the schools and Gary Berg um, and Chris Mason, who is with Mass DLER, because they all have been working closely together to watch this. Well, because we have to get all this criteria, like, how much electricity, like with the lighting, how much were the old lights using, how much will we save by upgrading to LED? So we'll save 4,836 kilowatts a year if we upgrade the sewer lights. So, you know, that saves the town money. Anyway, so we're, we're slowly but surely plugging away on that and hopefully some of this money will actually get spent pretty soon to do some of this work. So that's pretty much the news. Is that, mm -hmm. does that cover it? I talked to, um, so the next 4.3 is the Senior Center sol uh, Solar. Jane's somewhere tonight, I forget where she said she had to go, but anyway, um, she told me on the phone yesterday that um, the select board did give a deposit to Valley Solar for 2,500, and they are now working on the detailed plan for installing solar on the right. on the senior center. So she's, I guess they said it could take one to three months to work up the plan, but she got the feeling that it was only going to take them about a month. And it sounded like a pretty large system. Yeah, the Do you have more to insight? maximize the roof space. She said 195 panels. Yeah. Wow. On all the all the roof spaces with the exception of the north facing and the lower um, the east front, side. the lower front section, which okay. So, do you know the kilowatt size of the system? Um, I'm not in front of me. I, okay. I don't want to guess at that, but I think it was. Uh, I, I don't want to guess at that. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can dig it up while we're meeting. And you say Valley Solar. Right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure we'll maybe be privy to the plan once they have it. It was the maximum mm -hmm. kilowatts that we could fit on the build that could be fit right. on the building. Right. All right. And I guess that's it on that. Um, and the last thing is my idea of planting, is seeing if Mass DOT would plant wildflowers, uh, you know, the area of Route 9 is currently under uh, construction in what's called the hell strip. That's the area between the sidewalk and the road. I was thinking, wow, it would be nice to have wildflowers there instead of just grass. So I, I actually got in touch with Megan and she's to see if that was something they 
could get involved. You know, I really didn't know how it would happen. And she said, it, you know, that's not within their purview. But she said, get in touch with Mass DOT because they're the ones that do that. So I did. And, you know, the, the gentleman I spoke to, he, you know, he took me, he was very, very nice. And he, um, he said, I really don't know. I think it's too late. You know, I think it's already all been planned, but I will ask. So I got this very nice email back to him, and basically, uh, you guys can all read it, but um, it was all planned out already. And um, we would have had to be in on the, you know, when they were designing the road, and like a couple of years ago when all this was being decided. And, um, and he said that usually what he was told is that, um, and you can go to the map. I, I printed it out, and another time we can talk about. I, I can't even bring up the topic right now because it's not on the agenda. But anyway, Mass DOT does. I mean, they have these amazing wildflower mixes, tall grass mixes, short grass mixes, all kinds of a whole protocol for plantings. And but he said that generally they reserve the wildflower plantings for along major highways where there's like a hu you know a large swath of land on either side so that none of that has to be mowed the little strips not so much and that i guess their agreement mass dot's agreement with the town was to replant the areas the, the way they were before they tore up the road so <coughs> In answer to your question, um, it, they proposed an 84.7 kW system for the roof, annual production of uh, 89,200 kilowatts, and an estimated 25 year saving of about $765,000 in offset energy costs. $765,000 savings? Over 25 years. Over 25 years. years. And again, that's the first draft, but that's going to be how much? pretty close to it. So how much is it going to cost? No, how much savings? Uh, over the course of its life, a uh, 25-year life, $765,000. So that's a pretty decent size system. For next month, and just thinking ahead about the agenda, do you have more information about any particular solar on the landfill? I've been out of town for uh, almost the whole month, so um, I will get back on it and okay. get things going there. All right. So we can look at that then. Yeah. But that's pretty impressive if we can get um, a system of that size on this building yeah. and save the town that much. Yeah. And that money for this system came from the building fund? Yeah, they had previously allocated it and just yeah. never, never actually, they sent out a bid at one point yeah. and it was so complicated. This it was before this they lifted that red tape thing. Right? This proposal that we sent out was much simpler and much friendlier to the, to the various respondents. So about 200000 for the cost of the system? Um, their bid came in at two hundred twelve thousand okay. dollars. Seems like a pretty good return on investment. Well, yeah, especially since it's funds that have already been there. Just yeah, yes. they have the money yeah. just sitting there. But yes, it's a decent, you know, decent return on investment. Okay. For public comment. And and, and that two hundred twelve thousand. Yeah. 212000 of that, about $66,000, will come back to, to the town's budget within a year from the IRS credit. Mm -hmm. so. Thanks. Nice. Okay, so um, that's it for our agenda. Um, public comment? Yes. Up to three minutes. Please keep your comments uh, relevant to this committee. Um, about six months ago at this one of these meetings, we're discussing the um, electric bills, and to and I had previously at EverSource as my supplier, and um, we talked about the switch over to this. How do you say this? Constellation. 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 Mm -hmm. Out of Texas. 
and my the supply cost of electricity from my monthly bill has definitely gone down. However, I question is Eversource doing a surcharge on the delivery charges? Because no. the, the it, it appears that the cert that delivery charges have increased substantially. That's to keep in mind, we have nothing to do with the no, aggregation. No, no, I, I, it's yeah. just a general comment. So, yeah. that, I don't know. I'll have to look. I, I, don't don't think, have that. I don't think that they would be able to increase your distribution costs just because you switched your supply to somebody no. else. That would be a yeah. illegal I thing. Mean, I think and my guess is that all everybody's distribution costs continue to go up. Okay. Uh, another comment. The one thing in the Route 9 construction, and making Route 9 one lane is really pushing the traffic off of Route 9 onto Bay Road and Rocky Hill Road. And it's, I think it's detri detrimental to the uh, town, but that's just a general comment. That's all. You know, it, it sounds from what I've read in the Gazette and other sources that that was really handled by the state and a number of people on the housing community page um, have said it's too bad that they didn't listen more but it was handled at the state level rather yeah, than the community right. level which the, is the pain of, of yeah what we go through to have better roads um, just suffering you, through the construction but you can't you, you can't pull on the rocky Hill road because there's so much traffic in the morning with the umass traffic really it's awful and then um I don't know the the originally originally when they were widening Route Nine, they were doing different phases. The first phase was yeah. the Coolidge Bridge. Sex, second phase was the West Street. Third phase was the Middle Street. And then now they changed it. They were supposed to do a four-lane highway from the bridge to the center of Amherst, yeah. and that all changed with the Green New Deal. But um, there's some pluses. But there's a lot of negatives also. That, that's all. Thank you, Tom. Anybody else with public comment? Okay. So, um, Kathy, you want to do the note typing next time too? Sure. Okay. There's a chance that Marion might come in and do it as well. That's good. If she's here, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, that doesn't matter. That's fine. Okay, so um, shortest meeting we ever had, I think. But uh, so it's 7.52. And, uh, any motion to adjourn the meeting? I move to adjourn the meeting. I second it. All right, everyone in favor? Nice. Nice.